Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma bada habita fil asalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Asalallah kareem. Rabbil arshi ladheem in yatawallana fi dunya wa l'akhira. Ahabati fil lah. Continue on in our series of two hadith before bedtime. That we reach the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Which is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari. An Ibn Umar radiyallahu tala anhu. Radiyallahu tala anhuma. Qala akhda Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bimun kabay. Faqal kun fi dunya ka annaka gharib. O abar al-sabil. Wa kana Ibn Umar yukul. Iza amsayta fala tantadhir al-sabah. Wiza asbahta. فلا تنتظر المساء وخذ من صحتك لسقمك ومن حياتك لموتك أخرجه بخاري. What a powerful hadith of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم. And an ether of a salaf al-salih ridwan Allahi alayhim meaning meaning Ibn Umar رضي الله تلا عنهما so Ibn Umar, the son of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala an, he said, uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam grabbed my shoulders. And then he said, Kun fi dunya ka'annaka gharib. Be in this world as if you're a stranger. Be in the world as if you're a stranger. O Abra Sabil. Or a traveler. And Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala used to say, if you reach the evening, then do not expect to reach the morning. And if you wake in the morning, then do not expect to make it to the night. Take from your health in opposition to when you're sick. And from your Life before you die. And this is in Bukhari. Wow, how many beautiful, beautiful benefits we we can uh, derive from this. Uh, this beautiful hadith and this ether of the Salaf. From those benefits that we can gain. Is that the Prophet said, Be in this life as if you're, sh you're a stranger. Think if you were to practice that. If you begin to practice that sabil, that path of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and you leave off immersing yourself in this dunya, in the materialism, in those things which take you away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll be on khair kathir. And your heart will not be heavy with weighing on what somebody else has. And let me be jealous of this one. And let me take from this one. And even do illegal things to gain wealth and status. Because if you are giving priority to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you will not. You will be like a stranger. And as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O Abra Sabil, or uh, someone, uh, or as a traveler. Why? Because a traveler, what do they do? They pack very minimal preparation. When you're traveling, you're not supposed to take, you know, if you're taking a one-day trip, you don't take 15 suitcases. You don't take your whole wardrobe or half your wardrobe, most people, and the people who, you know, afford. You might even travel in order to save airfare, especially in these days and age, you might just take a minimal, you might not even take a suitcase, just a backpack because of the cost. And so the traveler, they don't really, they travel and they don't really become super comfortable. They're, they're in motion, they're, you know, things can happen, all kind of things. So if you are to be like a traveler in this life, then you're not indulging too much in the uh, the material uh, the materialism of this life, and that you keep things restrained 
So that way you are focused on your ibadah and you are realizing that your time in this dunya is short. It's short. We'll be on our deathbeds very soon. We don't know when, but we will. In light of this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another hadith, he said, a dunya sijin al mu'min genital kafir. He said this in uh, Sahih Muslim. He said, this dunya, this life is the paradise of the disbeliever and the, the prison of the believer. Why? In a prison, you are restrained from things. You, you can't indulge in many things. But in paradise, you'll have everything. But for the one who disbelieves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they live literally YOLO, it's amazing. You only live once, they say. That they worship anything they want. They worship their desires. They do anything they want. They go out of character. They go disrespect their elders, destroy their elders, fight their elders, do the worst of sins because they feel, hey, I'm not accountable to anything or anyone. I don't even believe in Allah. I don't believe in Yom Al-Akhirah. This is what they say. Some of them. And that's destruction. So the mu'min restrains himself or herself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and strives to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. And that's why the salaf of this ummah Rahimahumullah Jami'in, <clears throat> Jami'in. Some of them used to say, uh, a dunya, a dunya darul amal, wal akhira dara jaza. This life is the abode of doing good deeds or works. Because now is the time. When you die, when you're in your deathbed or you're sick, you won't even have the strength as, as Ibn Umar mentioned and as we'll get into the narration. You won't even have the time. You won't even have the fudra, the ability to do righteous deeds. If you're, if you're sick on your deathbed and you're on oxygen, and oxygen, that's a rough state. I, I've been, when I had COVID or I had a major allergic attack before, and that is a horrible, miserable state. Trying to pray like that, trying to function like that. You can't even, you know, everything is just misery when you can't breathe. And also, your, your limbs themselves. Maybe you can't pray standing anymore. You've lost function of your body. That's difficult. So now, if you have those abilities, is the time to worship along, come closer to Allah, and do the righteous good actions and deeds. And even more so, and I just recall one of the one of our elders, Rahmatullah Rahmatun Wasia, and we went to visit him. I didn't know him that well from our community, but I knew him enough over the years. But he was a mentor to many of my close brothers. And we went to visit him at the nursing home and just seeing his he was in good spirit, so to speak. You know, he was happy, he was jovial. But his senses were not there anymore. You know, he was in a nursing home and had diapers. And, you know, sometimes he's in a good mood, sometimes he's in a bad mood. So he's no, no longer is he responsible for prayer. And he's not, he probably prays sometimes when he could. And he just passed uh, maybe a month or a couple of months ago. The point is, he was once a very handsome, very big and nice size, handsome you know, he was, you know, and, and, and spent a lot of his works and his life doing da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the streets. So he had good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept them. But none of that can benefit you when you're, you're at the stage in life. He couldn't do da'wah anymore. He couldn't even pray anymore. Because his senses, you know, maybe some schizophrenia, you know, he's suffering from dementia and declining. To where you no longer even have control of your bowel movement and you have to be changed by a nurse, probably even a female nurse or whatever. It just at that stage he didn't know, you know. So using the blessing of your health to come closer to Allah and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the maqsad. That's the intent. 
<clears throat> and in the Athar of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala where he said, you know, don't expect, if you make it to the evening, don't expect to make it to the morning. And if you make it to the morning, don't expect to live uh, to see the evening. And take from your health before you become sick and from your life before you die. And that's in light of what we just said. That while you have the ability is a time to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and come closer to Allah azza wa jal. And to take advantage of the of your health to do righteous deeds. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, he mentioned, which means two things that most of the people uh, do not give heed to. Asiha wa firag. Their health and their free time. So many of the people, they waste their, their time. It's so easy to waste time. We all do it. And many of the people, they waste their health. They spend their health, they're partying, they're at the club, they're doing this, they're traveling to Vegas, they're just living life. Instead of paying attention to that which is the most important thing, which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek forgiveness from Allah azza wa jal. And <clears throat> the next hadith, because we're actually going to talk about two hadith, even though we mentioned other hadith. Also, when Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala an huma qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man tashabba bi qawmin fa huwa minhum akhrajahu Abu Dawood wa sahahahu Ibn Hibban. In the next hadith, this is the last hadith of the night, is also a hadith of or an athar of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala an huma in which he said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, whoever resembles a people, then he is from them. This hadith shows us the danger of resembling and practicing other festivals and practices of non-Muslim communities. As believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should adhere to the book and the sunnah. And that which contravenes or contradicts or goes against the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, we reject. We stay away from it. And the various ways and forms that we can resemble people who are disobedient to Allah, people who maybe Allah has cursed, are many. And it's a grave uh, danger, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned. He said, Whoever resembles a people, he is from them. So that is like you are being associated, those people you are associated with, and that you resemble, that you're striving, you're striving to be like them, and you're resembling them, that you're from them. Now, one thing I do want to mention. It does not mean that you can make takfir of people and say, well, he hangs around disbelievers. He you know, wears the same basketball gear that they do. He's a disbeliever. No, but it shows us the danger of imitating non-Muslim practice, festivals, holidays, communities, and habits. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil, protect us from kulisu wa makru wa sallallahu wa sallam. على النبي محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم